This is an instructional video of painting sea creature silhouettes posted by Amanda Powell. So to start, we will have our palette filled with white, black, Prussian blue, amethyst, acid blue, and turquoise. You can choose other colors if you like. The main portion of this painting is the movement. So your brush strokes are more important than the colors. And even those are supposed to be a reflection on yourself. So here we are mixing some turquoise with white and getting different shades and starting at the center of our canvas and fanning outward. I'm doing these quarter circles fanning out from the center to illustrate movement of the water as we are looking up from the bottom of the sea. One of the main things about painting water is showing movement and showing the reflection of color. So we're going to do a lot of alternating and blending throughout this video. Feel free to deviate. One suggestion when doing this painting is keeping your lightest color at the center, as if you are looking up from the bottom. You could alternately start with dark colors and move lighter, as if you are looking down. It is all a matter of preference. As you can see with my brush strokes, we're getting a circular pattern across the canvas. Well, I do have some dark colors towards the center. Most of the darker colors will be towards the edge of the painting. We will also be adding white and black to this painting to emphasize the depth. Darker colors going up towards the center of the painting will make it look like you have other sea creatures outside of your field of view. As you add more color to the canvas, don't be afraid of blending the colors. Good part about acrylic painting is there's really no bad answer. You can always go back and adjust things once the painting is dry. However, for when you're trying to blend, moving fast and deliberately will also help with maintaining the ability for the paint to blend with other colors. 
If you wait too long, you may have to add water to your brush. Or you may have to paint over the thing entirely. I've added some water to my brush so I can blend the paint more fluidly. While normally with acrylic paint you do not want to add water, in the case of this we do want the unpredictability of the water to give different shades and blending options to our painting. It also helps to use water to make this look like water. Feel free to rotate your canvas as you go so you are more comfortable as you paint, as well as so you can make the brush strokes you want to make. As you can see, the variety of gestures adds texture to the water. Try not to leave any unpainted canvas when you're painting. It will make your painting look unfinished. Continue to rotate your painting and add more paint and or water as you go until it achieves the look you're looking for. The way you hold your brush can also affect the texture you leave behind. As you can see here, I'm adding more gestures by holding the brush sideways to add a choppy effect to the water as you look up. Thank you. 
adding some light to the center of the painting also adds more light. You can also gesture outward to add more light coming down from above. You can make your water as peaceful or as turbulent as you like. And now we round out the corners with black. Feel free to have your corners rounded out as shallow or as deep as you'd like. Kind of makes the painting look like a crystal ball. This is also a good time to take care of your edges. The edges of your painting make it look finished. This is the other reason why we don't leave any unpainted canvas. Usually when you paint the edges of your painting, you carry out the colors that are already in your painting. However, in the case of this painting, you could strategically paint all of the sides black and it will look finished and contained. I'm also going to add some wisps of black here in the water. It gives the illusion of depth and makes it look like there are more sea creatures out here that we can't even see. So as we near painting the actual sea creatures, some tips and tricks for that are if you are uncomfortable freehanding them, feel free to use a pencil or a marker to place them. This can also help you with selection of the type of creatures you want to add. As long as you paint over the pencil markings and the marker markings, no one will ever be the wiser. Selection of your sea creatures and placement is all up to you. In this case, you'll be moving to a smaller brush. I would recommend one with a pointed tip. The flat tip won't necessarily give you 
the crisp lines you're looking for. And this is more of a, like a liner brush. You can also pick an angled brush as I did, uh, which will give you the option to do larger areas while also keeping a crisp line. Here I am starting with a sea turtle as our first silhouette. Animals are basically shapes to start with. So I started this turtle with an oval. And then I paint in the tail and another oval for the head to orient where he is and which direction he's facing before placing his flippers. And these don't have to be perfect. It's all about perspective. And some of your creatures, you could paint darker than others. You can also add a little bit of water if you would like to have a creature that is more translucent, like a jellyfish. Now we're on to one of my favorites, a squid. And I paint a rounded diamond to paint the back of its head, two circles for its eyes. While a squid has six tentacles, you can choose to deviate if you like and have as many or as few tentacles as you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and go with the six as well as add the thicker ends of two of its longer tentacles for accuracy, but you don't have to do that. You can keep it as simple or as intricate as you like. If at any time while you're painting you feel frustrated, it's okay to take a step back and walk away and then come back to it. You can also go back and touch up areas if you want to change the size, as I did here with the back of the uh, uh, squid's head.
Time to rotate the canvas. Up oh, here we go, some basic fish. Variation in size can also illustrate your depth. Adding a little bit of water and diluting it can also make it look like a creature is further in the background. Now we're going to begin our jellyfish. I diluted my paint with water to give a more airy feel to the jellyfish and add to the translucence so you can still see the texture of the water through the jellyfish. The technique I used on the main stalk of the jellyfish could be used for other creatures such as kelp. Well, if you consider kelp a creature or a plant, either way. Try different things. You could even make a sea monster if you wanted to. Here's a baby sea turtle. Using circles and lines, I'm now making a dolphin. In this painting, I'm doing a side silhouette of a dolphin. You could also do a silhouette from underneath or above, uh, but that might make it harder to figure out where the fins are.
can add as few or as many sea creatures as you like. And at this point, if your edges are painted, you could consider this painting done. If you haven't already covered your edges, this would be the time to do so. Additionally, you can also put bubbles into your painting. Simple circles in various sizes can also add depth to your painting. You can also add highlights with semi-circles and quarter circles to show the roundness of the bubble. And you can choose to have your bubbles overlap the silhouettes or just be around them. It's a personal preference. Simple dots towards the center of your canvas can also act as bubbles. As they rise to the top. And remember, if you haven't treated your edges, now's the time to finish that up. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. This was Sea Creatures Silhouettes, an instructional video. If you enjoyed the music in the background, that is Water Prelude by Kevin McLeod. Thanks again and hope to paint for you soon.